Hello, I've been out and about this weekend, so this is why I've got a slightly different video than normal. Um, and that reminds me, if you've left any comments on the videos and I've not replied to them, that's the reason why. I think I'm a very difficult person to buy gifts for, because I like code, and you can't buy people code. And so I was most impressed when my friend Paul, after I helped him out a little bit, got me a gift. And it's the Game Prince. And this is NAF on so many levels, it ticks all the right boxes for me. Firstly, we can see on the front here, it says it's for iPhone, PC and Android games, and it's the model RS1. It's got built-in classic games. On the side of the box, it's got Luigi and Mario, and Game Prince, I'm sure they've paid the requisite license fees for these characters. And on this side of the box, it says a two and a half inch TFT display, new classic 12-bit games. Now that's, that's really impressive. You've got to have those extra four bits or you don't need those four bits, but we'll see. Uh, built, oh, well, it says actually bullet in classic games. And tells me about the power supply, either three AAAs or a lithium ion battery. Hmm. So I thought this video would be cool to unbox it, have a look at it, review it, and then take it to bits and see how it works. So it comes in the box, and in the box we've got this uh, sort of plastic moulded thing to hold it together. And we've got some instructions. So it says, two, how to operate. Please put in batteries according to the polarity sign and close the cover. Perfect, that's normal. AV cable to insert a video output port. Plug the other end of the TV to the video game interactive television. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to plug this into my television. Uh, so, so for step three, not and. When the pictures are abnormal, please change the batteries at time. Do not dispose batteries at will. Protest the environment. Protest the environment. Hmm. Hidden political message there. And finally, under battery safety instructions, it says the machine without charge function. Right, well that's all clear then. Good. So I don't know really what to expect from this device. It's, uh, it's reasonably solid out of plastic. It's got a, a small speaker at the bottom, and at the top here it's got a, an AV out. Uh, if we flip it over, this is the battery compartment. I've, I've put in some batteries already, three AAAs. And it's got a little volume dial on this side. And it's got the buttons A, B, T, start and pause, and a D-pad. So let's switch it on. Wow, okay, it's very loud. Let's turn it down a little bit. So the screen's actually not bad quality, and we can see a sort of a Mario castle. Let's press the start key. 152 games in one. So let's have a look, what games have we got? If I, uh, I'll uh, try zooming in just a little bit. There we go. We've got Contra, Super Mario. Well, we've got to try Super Mario, haven't we? Uh, start button. Nope. A button. So it's clearly a little NES emulator then, if this works. It's Mario, that's good. It seems to be emulating very well. Oh, it's a bit difficult to play this through the camera, and it, the buttons are backwards, which I'm not used to. So jump to my thumb is the B button. Uh, T is some sort of turbo button. Okay. Oh, jump, jump, jump. Yay, there we go. Right, let's try something else. So this is 152 games in one. And it looks like they're all just uh, familiar NES games. Uh, but we're starting to see Dong Key 3. Don't know, don't recognise that one. Can it really have 152 games on it? Dragon 2, Dragon 3. Oh, I've already seen Chippendale, and here we've got Mario 2. Is that actually Mario 2? Let's have a look. Seems like Mario Brothers again. Ah, oh, World 2 1. So that, that's a bit of a cheat, then, isn't it? Go backwards. Mario 8, which I'm suspecting now is just going to be World 8. And Mario 5. So it's not really 152 games in one. Now here, this is interesting. We've got one here called Giant, and it shows a picture of Mario. Let's have a, a look what this one is. So World 1. 1, Mario, it just looks like normal Mario. So does this not, not count as a game? Let's grab a mushroom. 
Oh. Ah. He stayed big, Mario. So that must mean I'm I'm invincible then. So giant is uh just keeps you keeps you big, Mario. You don't lose those mushrooms. So I wonder if this is really probably only about 20 or 30 games, but each ROM is stored with a Game Genie code to change the parameters. I think the best thing to go by is this little picture up here. That tells you really what the game is. And what we see as we go through them, we start to see the same one over and over. But it does have some games I'm not that familiar with, so Eyes Story. It's clearly either a Chinese or a Japanese game. Push start. It's a guy shooting things from, I guess, a third eye on his forehead. Actually, it's not bad. It's pretty quick. So I think the emulation is sound. It'll be interesting to see what's inside this. What processor is it using to uh, perform this emulation? So this game is graphically quite good. I was wondering if it wasn't doing things like Super Mario Bros. 3 because it's not emulating the PPUs required for those ROMs. And it was perhaps picking a particular generation of ROM. I'm being attacked by cats. Oops. Okay. So let's take a look inside. I've got my uh, screwdriver here. We'll just take off the four Phillips screws on the back. Whenever I'm dismantling electronics, I have this handy set of uh, all of the different security bits. But I don't need them in this case, they're just uh, regular Phillips screws. Or posi screws, depending on where you're from. So does this come apart? It does. Alright. So I've fully disassembled the thing now, and we've got the two halves of the plastic case. This half has the battery pack in, and this half is just buttons and screen hole. We'll leave that out. And we can see really there's only two PCBs and the screen. And the screen module looks to be a completely separate component on its own. It's just a ribbon cable attached to the board. So we, if possible you might be able to remove that and use it for other things. It's a 320 by 240 resolution uh, little TFT screen. And we can see the ribbon cable has lots of little components already populated on it. So it'd probably be quite easy to hack into something else. And given the price point of these things to buy it might actually be worth buying just for the screen alone. However, I do like NES emulators. If we go over to this board first, so these are the battery cables coming in. And they're going into, uh, let's get this at the right angle so we can see, an 8002A, uh, which I believe that's an audio amplifier. Which makes a little bit of sense because we've got one of the channels coming from that chip going all the way down to the main speaker output. The power supply then goes through the on-off switch uh, to what looks like a little voltage regulator here. I guess that's the power supply for the board. The PCBs are connected by a rather chunky ribbon cable. I just fold the screen back there. Uh, and there's not much on the board. There's a, a few passives and I guess some filters and protection for this uh, volume potentiometer. And there's a little, let's have a look what these are. I guess these are just fairly bog standard transistors. This is the AV out jack, by the way. And I couldn't for the life of me get this to work. I wanted to try and record the contents of the screen and it just, it just wasn't gonna happen. So I'm going to flip the board over and this is the back of the uh, speaker board, which is nothing there. Fine, fair enough, so we'll leave that alone. And on this side, we've only got uh, three main components. We've got a, a crystal here, which is 21.47 megahertz. And this is presumably the processor, and sadly, we'll never know what that is without destroying this thing. It's just a die on board solution. And I guess the only final component that can be then is a flash memory. So if we tilt that up, uh, let's have a look at that. It's an M29. W64, so I'm guessing it's a 64 megabit flash memory, which will store all of the ROM data. And so it turns out there's not much inside one of these things. It's not even really worth salvaging any parts for other projects. Perhaps one day if I feel so inclined, uh, we could uh, create some FPGA code to try and extract the contents of this ROM and see, see which ROMs have they pirated to use, because I'm sure that this thing is breaking all kinds of laws. Even though this device is a bit naff, I think it's still remarkable what they can do for the price point. My day job is embedded systems and I just simply couldn't build something uh, for the cost of this device. It also ticks all of the right nostalgia boxes for me. 
And you can see my thoughts on that on my very first video. So my friend Paul bought me this because he wanted to give me some inspiration for future videos. He knows I like the retro stuff and they've got to be achievable in the command line. And playing this makes me think, hmm, I might have a go at this. And so there you have it, the game prints. It's both really bad and really good at the same time. We'll be back to normal next week with a programming video. Don't worry, it's a pretty cool one. See you next time.